Welcome to another episode of A-List Classics, where we talk about must-see movies that are the greatest films of all time. I am your host, the Game Changer, Wes Troop. And in this episode, we're traveling back the furthest we've ever gone so far in this series to 1933 because... You might want to get your bananas out for this one, people. <laughs> We're going to discuss a old school monster movie. You may have heard a little heard of, have a little bit about this guy. We're going to talk about the action film King Kong. Filmmaker Carl Denham, who's become known for his wildlife films, has chartered a ship, The Venture, and its crew for his latest project that he's planned to shoot on an exotic island. Seeing as no actress wants to be in one of his movies, Carl quickly tries to find someone that will suit the role and finds Anne Darrow on the streets of New York City, promising her the adventure of a lifetime. Anne meets the ship's first mate, Jack Driscoll, and while the two seem to butt heads at first, they quickly fall for each other. Soon, Denham reveals that they are headed to the uncharted territory of Skull Island, the rumored home of the giant ape-like monster named Kong. Once they arrive at the island, Anne is captured by natives and given to Kong himself, who runs off with her while Carl and Jack try to rescue Anne and survive some of the island's other inhabitants. King Kong is an outstanding action-adventure horror film. It was directed and produced by Marion C. Cooper and Ernest B. Shudasak, who had worked together, uh, previously included The Four Feathers and The Most Dangerous Game, but became best known for their collaboration here. The film debuted at Radio City Music Hall in New York on March 2, 1933, and was then released nationwide on April 7, 1933, finding itself as a massive critical and box office success. The film's effects here were groundbreaking for its time and blew audiences' minds. The stop-motion creatures by Willis O'Brien look fantastic, as do all of the great practical effects and spectacular handmade sets, which all really created a lot of filmmaking techniques. Looking at it today, there are a number of things that could easily be considered dated for some of the creature effects, which I think still look great, but more or less the film being a product of its time, such as some Asian stereotypes, its view on women, and especially the island's natives. The adventure itself can be exciting as the crew come across and get chased by a handful of dinosaurs, such as a Stegosaurus, a Brontosaurus, and a T-Rex. There's also a great battle between T-Rex and Kong. Some more amazing action sequences include the crew trying to avoid Kong but try to come to Anne's rescue, Kong going berserk on the villagers of the island, and of course the ape going on a rampage in New York City, including his climb of the Empire State Building, which has become one of the most famous images in cinema. The film can get rather violent with a pretty high body count, and when the film was re-released years later on multiple occasions, some of the death scenes were actually edited out. The relationship between Anne and Kong is a bit different here than we've seen in other versions where the heroine begins to feel for the ape, whereas here she's mostly just screaming in terror the entire time she's in his company. A great scream, by the way, but unfortunately it can be a bit much after a while. While maybe not as much as some of the other versions, we certainly feel for Kong throughout this film. The love story between Anne and Driscoll can be unintentionally funny at times, but it's passable enough to work. Of course, there's a nice message here of leaving nature alone, as Denman decides he could make a fortune and bring Kong back to New York to put on Broadway, which of course sounds like a brilliant idea. Very charismatic performances by the cast, starring Faye Ray as Anne Darrow, the unemployed actress who's become homeless as a result of the Great Depression, who goes to make the film on Skull Island and is captured by Kong, Robert Armstrong as Carl Denham, the filmmaker who wants to base his latest project around Skull Island and Kong, and Bruce Cabot as Jack Driscoll, the ship's second-in-command who falls in love with Anne. 
While the film surprisingly earned no Academy Award nominations, Selznick wanted to nominate O'Brien and his crew for a special award for visual effects. Although the Academy declined, the award would come into play just a few years later in 1938. Over the years, AFI has listed it as one of the best 50 films of all time, and it has been added to the National Film Registry. King Kong has had a couple of remakes since, one in 1976, directed by Dino De Laurentiis, and in 2005, which of course was directed by Peter Jackson. There have also been a few sequels, like Son of Kong and Kong Lives, as well as the reboot with Kong Skull Island and the upcoming film Godzilla vs. Kong. The film has also inspired a theme park attraction at Universal Studios Florida, Confrontation, which was one of my favorite and, in my opinion, one of the best theme park rides of all time that sadly no longer exists. There is, however, a newer attraction called Skull Island Reign of Kong, which at least represents him. <laughs> through all of the incarnations throughout the years, the original King Kong is the best version of the tale and is still a must-see masterpiece that turned the monstrous ape into a cinematic icon. All right, well, that's the show. I'll be back with another episode of A-List Classics very soon. But until then, don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Westside of 515. Like to join Facebook, Facebook.com slash West Troop A list. And of course, you can follow me on the Twitter and the Instagram at West A list. Until next time, Troop out.